coming to you from the Star City. This is Scarlet Fever, a daily Nebraskan production. It's a football Monday, a victory Monday, Ooh. but by the skin of their nose. Happy their victory Monday, everybody. Yeah, skin of their nose. Would you rather me say skin of their teeth? Yeah, that's that's the expression. That, the expression. Yeah, I like skin of their nose better. But. By the hair of their chinny chin chin. Sure, let's go with that. Welcome in to Scarlet Fever. It's October 7th. Danny Berg's here. Hello. Ben Droz is here. Hola. Hi, hi Ben. Emma's here. Hi, hi, Emma. Full house. Full full house today. Not not the poker hand. And, and let's just start by saying that Steven Sipple has done a huge job with bumping up our ratings this week. Right, Ben? Yeah, thanks, Sip. Yeah. He, well, he posted my story on Twitter, so that was nice. We love Steven Sipple. He's... He's a goat. Big shout. Big, big shout to, to Steve Sipple. And I'm sure he had some raging thoughts after this game on Saturday. And Ben also has some raging thoughts. And we're going to get into said raging thoughts. Sure, yeah. Um, I'm, I know in Sipple's column, he said something about, like, lipstick or something about the team. He's like, yeah, I don't even know. He, they, they probably put on, like, a full face of makeup. <laughs> no, he was saying something. He's, like, putting lipstick. He's like, don't put lipstick on this team or something. There, I don't even know. It well, was, I'm not, not going to do that because it doesn't <laughs> look like any of these people would look good wearing makeup. Um, but anyway. Danny, I think you'd look good in some lipstick. N- uh, no. Okay, um, let's, get, let's get into it. Let's let's leave that to Emma. Um, <laughs> I we don't get, even wear lipstick. So. Props to you. <laughs> Here we go. Let's, let's get right into it. First things first. And a lot of stories for this week led with this and this is probably the first time that we have seen Dylan Rayola look like a freshman and not like a superhero. Yeah. But <laughs> um he is a freshman, so it makes sense if he looks like one. But yes. he hasn't played been playing like one until now. So um yeah, it was a rough game for Rayola, but he did exactly what I so if you look at his second half stats, he was like two for nine or something in the second half throwing if you could look up the um, actual stats, Danny, that that helped me sure, greatly. Man. But um, he wasn't great in the second half. First half wasn't great, but he was okay in the first half. It was really the second half that really hurt his stats. And I feel like that was more of just Nebraska playing super conservative. And, no, he didn't play great, but that had to do something. That that was a big part of why his stats didn't look good. It's just because Nebraska got a two-score lead against Rutgers, and they knew Rutgers' offense couldn't move the ball. And Nebraska's defense, which we'll get into defense in a little bit too, but um, I just feel like that's kind of the game plan was to not let Rayola do that much, just kind of run the ball, try to bleed the clock, and I mean it worked, even if it wasn't pretty. Yeah, I agree. Definitely not pretty. Um, a couple interceptions and sacks that you never want to see, um, but they got the job done in the end. So by the skin of their nose. By I'm, the skin of their teeth. Can you say Sorry, the expression no, right? Dan? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. No, no, I'm not. And. You know, we we were all sitting up there, and Rayola's interception that that was the first interception that was on him. Mm-hmm. That was a terrible straight to straight, straight up terrible read. And he just didn't see him. No, it happens. It will happen. And it happens to the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So. It was it was a little jarring to see it happen though. Mm. Six games into the season though, because I mean, yeah, he does have three interceptions to his name already, but the two that have already happened before this weren't totally on him this one was totally on him that that's where we really started to see like okay we got to remember that this isn't a superhero this is an 18 year old kid who's still trying to figure his way out through things and he's only played six games of college football in his entire career I mean it's not surprising to me that he finally threw his I don't want to say his first interception but first like bad interception because I mean we're six games in I mean it, it happens. I mean, interceptions are a part of the game. So I still would have expected it to happen earlier in the season, though. That, that's what that's what I'm saying. Like it, like people being like, "Oh, I'm surprised you threw an interception." And be like, I mean, it was going to happen eventually. It's not like he was going to go through his Nebra- entire Nebraska career without misreading a coverage once. Oh, like, that would be pretty cool. I mean, it it just wasn't going to happen. I mean, you see Patrick Mahomes getting picked off in the NFL. Ben's a pessimist. And, and Josh Allen. I mean, <laughs> he it, hates it, everything it, fun. No, well, that's, I'm, that's that's wrong, Danny. <laughs> I feel like in the past it seems like Nebraska's had like three interceptions per game. So I feel like the fact that he's only had three this whole season is, I feel like that's a testament to him and the player he is. And he's been taking care of the ball too. Like mm-hmm. I, I last year it seemed like we were a broken record when we would say like Nebraska quarterbacks cannot protect the football because it's always getting knocked out. It's always 
squirting out of their hands when they're getting sacked <laughs> and it's turning into scooping scores. Like that has not been the case with Rail so far this year. He's done a really nice job at making sure that the football's taken care of. And something Rule said post game when um I'm not sure what the exact question was asked, but it might have been like how he thought Rail played. Um Rule said he's protecting the football when he's taking those sacks, he's protecting the football, not letting it get stripped. I mean, that's huge. I mean, he got sacked four times in the last game. Um, some of those were on him for holding the ball a little bit too long. But still, when he's getting sacked, he's not being too loosey-goosey with it, you know, securing it and making sure he doesn't fumble. I mean, that's big. I mean, just being able to punt it instead of turning it over is just so big. Especially when we have Brian Bichini punting at 69 yards on the last oh, we'll punt of the game. we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into but that. Um, just, like, just... Rutgers was playing to not mess up, and so was Nebraska there at the end. Both teams were kind of just like, punt that way, punt this way, punt that way. It was kind of a boring game that way, unless you, like, unless, unless you like defense. Or but, punts. I mean, that's the, kind of game, that's the kind of game, though, we haven't seen Nebraska win, though. Last year, we haven't seen Nebraska win that kind of a game in such a no. long time. Because Nebraska always loses. When you get into those kind of games, the turnover margin is what usually wins you those games. That's why I'm okay that it was a close game and because they still won. Yeah. And the fact that they had two pump two punts blocked and Nebraska still somehow won is also crazy and we can get into that later too, but if you want to stick on offense. But I mean this is just this is just the fact that it wasn't great and I still don't know if Nebraska is in the upper tier of Big Ten teams yet. I, I don't want to say that. I still would put, you know, all the t- team, all the Big Ten teams that are ranked right now, those all those teams are better than Nebraska. I don't know how close, like how close is Nebraska to Indiana right now, which I, is their next opponent. I would, I would. The only thing I would, would would rebuke with that is that I would not say that Michigan is that much better than Nebraska right now. I mean, there, um, I'm. I'm in the camp right now that doesn't think that Michigan should be ranked. I'm not saying that Nebraska should be taking their spot, but I also think that. Michigan should not be a ranked team right now. I don't think Michigan would have only put up 14 against Rutgers, to be honest. I don't know. They did just lose to Washington, though. So it's, I don't know. I'm just saying Purdue was down by, I mean, not Purdue. Nebraska was down by three points in the third quarter against Purdue. That was a really ugly game against Rutgers. And I I don't want to say that wasn't a, that Rutgers team isn't bad, but. That's not like a high caliber team. It, I, I'm not. I'm not arguing though that Nebraska should be ranked because they shouldn't be, especially no. with how they've been playing and it, they've been winning ugly. They're right on the edge though. They're, they're, they're 27th, they're, I think. They're right. They're right there. They're the sec, They're the second team out behind USC. Mm-hmm. And but I I just don't think that Michigan is that much better. But anyway, we can. We'll see. You thought that about Illinois though too. And- Okay. I'm just saying. So, I, I, I just, <laughs> I, really? Was that necessary? <laughs> I just think there there's a jump, though, from... I mean, take Michigan out of it, though. I mean, if, when Nebraska comes in and when goes and plays Ohio State, I, I just don't think it's going to be a great game. No. Um, and, now, and now Nebraska's next game is Indiana, which is a really big game. One, to secure your bowl spot, you get six wins. You're now bowl eligible, which... Huge because the team hasn't made a bowl game since what 2016. Yep. Um, so that's one reason why that game is big, and two, just to be able to beat a ranked team. Nebraska just hasn't been able to do that. Like Nebraska has been winning against these teams that they're better than, but can they beat? Can they? Can they beat a team that's just as good as them, just as good as them, or a little bit better than them? Can Nebraska pull that out? That's what we need. That that's what will put Nebraska into the next tier of Big Ten teams, in my opinion. More more long term. More long-term <laughs> stuff, you think, there? No. No. Right now. We're talking right now. I mean, well, right, right now we should be talking about why Nebraska was just able to, to pull that game out. I and, mean. And barely, too. Rutgers offense couldn't move the ball because Nebraska's defense turned back oh my the clock. Goodness. They the, looked good. Good is an understatement. Before we well, get. We have been hating on them, and they. they I haven't it been out. hating on them. I said we. I didn't say you. But like, as a collective, we had been a little down on them. I, I still want to see. I, sorry, I'm kind of stealing Danny's thunder here, but I still want to <laughs> see. I still want to see them do that against a better offense. I agree. Rutgers' offense is not going to let the abysmal. world on fire. That's what I'm saying. Like, Nebraska, the one good, I mean, the Colorado, when they played Colorado, okay, Colorado's a good offense, and they shut Colorado down, but that was a. Different Colorado that was a different team Colorado than team. right now. So, really, the only good offense they've played so far has been Illinois, and 
I said Illinois. Is, is Illinois? Mm. And, yeah, I know that that makes Danny mad. My bad. Not really. Is Illinois, and Illinois was moving up and down the field. So it. I mean, I this this Indiana game is going to be a big test because Indiana has scored a lot this season. Now they haven't played great opponents, but their offense is pretty good. When you score seventy seven against <laughs> any team, that's impressive. That's, yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> but but anyway, um, the. The running game was a topic that I really wanted to talk about today as well because we had said after the Purdue game that there wasn't a lot of parity anymore in that running back room, especially with how poorly Dante Dowdell played with running the ball. This week, we saw kind of 1A, 1B with Dowdell and Emmett Johnson. Both of them got 14 rushes. Mm. Dowdell got mm-hmm. 57 yards and a touchdown, and Emmett Johnson got 33 yards. Um, and then you also got to put Ramir Johnson in. Mm-hmm. Ramir, Five he, rushes there for him. He honestly was the best back out of. For, he was the best back out of the backfield for, for Nebraska. He had the longest reception and the longest rush of the game. 36 yard catch, I believe, and then it was an 18 yard run. Both the longest carry and longest reception. Yep. For Nebraska, so he, I mean, he was making plays all over the place. Um. I kind of want to see. I mean, I, I always say this because I mean, there's only so many touches to go around. But um, you know, you'd like to see Ramirez get a little bit more touches. But there, I mean, there, this is going to be a committee, so there's not going to be one guy that's just going to. I mean, I had a problem with when Dowdell had what 22 carries in the one game or 20 carries. Yeah, something I, huge I, I, like yeah, that. I, I didn't like that. But how how the, the running, how the backfield is looking right now is how it should be looking. Yeah, I and mean, there there shouldn't just be like we're going to lean on this one guy. And go to everyone else like every once in a while because yeah. it's not gonna, it's not the same. It, you're not gonna have a, a first down, second down back, and then a dedicated guy for third downs. It's like Ben said, it, it's running back by committee and whoever's got the hot hand. Yeah. And both Dowdell and Emma Johnson, and even Ramir Johnson, when he was getting those touches, they were all being explosive in their own individual ways. Mm hmm. Um, the only thing I don't like about how the backfield is shaping up right now is I feel like it's kind of obvious what Nebraska is going to do with the running back that's out there. Yeah, I, I, that's a little like when Dowdell's out there, you kind of know it's probably going to be a run, and if they don't run, he's not he's not a threat at all pass catching really. He's made and his, pro- his blocking's not fantastic no. either. So I mean that's the only thing that I really don't like about I mean Dowdell is just because it it kind of. Gives it, it away a little it, bit. It it just makes Nebraska's offense a little bit more one dimensional. But he's a better power runner. He's he's the best power runner they have on the roster, and he had some nice runs. But you know, Emmett Johnson, Ramir Johnson, give you that weapon in the passing game, and they both can also run it pretty well. Emmett Johnson's gonna get more carries than Ramir, but they both can run it pretty well too. Yeah, I mean, it does make it more obvious but if he is getting the job done at the end of the day i don't really care who I mean, has is the ball he though? i mean he had 57 yards so i would say yes and i don't know i think I he's know. getting the job done at the end of the day so i don't really have a problem if he's out there but once it is a problem where he's not getting the job done then i have a problem if it's too obvious i mean we were saying that when he had those 20 touches and at what? But it was more even this week. It definitely was more. So e- that's why I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, it was more. I still want to see Ramir Johnson getting a couple more touches, but I'm not mad about the way that they're deploying him in the pass game because Mm-mm. they're using all of the skill sets that he has, and that's fine. If that means he's getting less touches in favor of more catches, then so be it. I'm just surprised Ramir is not getting more touches just because he's the most experienced back on the team. And, I mean, on Ramir's 18-yard run, when you just watch that, you're like, okay, Dowdo wasn't going to do that. Just that, just was like he Dowdo wasn't going to make guys miss like that. But then again, Ramir can't truck guys over like Dowdo does. They all have different skill sets. So the only the only issue I have with it is kind of makes they kind of seem a little bit obvious with the backs that are out there sometimes. But I don't know. They they're all I mean they're all tough backs. I don't want to. They're all good. They're all talented backs. They're not. But great they're not backs. great. They're not great backs. But and that's going to be. I mean, when Nebraska plays Indiana, being able to get that run game going is going to be big. And who's going to be the guy that's going to get going? Is it who's going to have the hot hand? I kind of want to see that. I want to see who who's looking the best. Get him the ball. Not this like, oh, we got to get Emmett the same amount of carries as Dowdell, or you know what I mean? Like, if Dowdell's looking better than Emmett Johnson, get Emmett, get Dowdell the ball. Then if Emmett Johnson's looking better than Dowdell. Get Emmett the ball. Like against Purdue, Emmett should have been getting like all the carries in that second half. He just looked better than Dowdell. 
And then against um, Rutgers that here, Emmett Johnson didn't look great. He wasn't bad, but he didn't look great. Dowdell he wasn't playing was to his bit. standards. Yeah, Dowdell was looking better. Get him the ball a little bit more. Just, I mean, it just, just ride the hot hand. Before we make the switch over to, to special teams, we are going to get to that. Special teams. Let's, let's <laughs> do, a little, do a little defense. Um, as we had talked about, we were turning back the clock a little bit with just how well they were playing, and we have to take it with a grain of salt because of how poorly Rutgers, uh, Rutgers' offense was, but still, the way that they were able to go out there and still put up a really good performance, no matter who the opponent is, oh, yeah. is still very encouraging. Like, we... We harp on them for not for yeah they had a they had a good outing against Purdue yeah they had a good outing against Rutgers but it's Purdue and Rutgers we we got to remember that and and I make this argument like these are also Division one athletes like these no, are yeah. these are these are guys that were some of the top players in their state these were guys that were yeah yeah they might be journeymen like Hudson Card is but there's a reason that they haven't been kicked out of college football because they can still produce. And yeah. like like Ethan Kaliak Manis, who's very well traveled, he's was able to beat Nebraska every time they played him until this weekend. Like these are all got these are all guys that can still compete. It might not be to the same caliber as their opponent, but they can still compete. Now mm-hmm. with that being said, it was very encouraging to see Nebraska be able to put up the defensive numbers that they did like that that was really really good to see especially when we had that they had that subpar performance against Illinois Purdue's gonna Purdue but again like PFF yeah take that one with a grain of salt as well they had Hudson Carr as the 10th best quarterback that week which still seems unbelievably flawed but I I really I, I yeah, ben be hate, honest. Ben I, hates I, I, I don't look at PFF grades like Ben I, hates I, I, it, I, I but like I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm not saying it's like never right. I just <laughs> I I don't know. There's just times where I see a grade, I'm like, yeah, that okay. that one doesn't make any sense. But um, any but anyway, like they've put up two quality performances in a row after that dud that they put out against Illinois. No, they they this defense is motivated. Oh, yeah. They did not like how they performed against Illinois. They said they didn't like how they performed against Illinois. It's like, okay, that's just words. Show it. And they have these last two weeks. This is a really good defense. I'm not going to take away from that. This is a really good defense. I'm still not ready to say it's a great defense, though. I, I'm still not ready to say that. If you're going to be a great defense, you got to do it against top caliber teams. And they get a ton of opportunities to do that. I think they are a great defense, and I think that this game was – a, like a decider how the rest of the season's gonna go personally i i mean have you seen rutgers offense i mean I, it i'm just, not I, but you can't just take away I, from i'm not taking away the, this is a really good defense and their goal and their goal line stand was amazing when uh oh, Nebraska had the punt blocked. but still any competent offense i don't care what the defense is out there they're gonna score when they get six chances they the should have that, I, I, multiple I, times i feel like that's more indicative of how bad rutgers offense was than how good nebraska's defense i think some was. of that too was play calling because there were some questionable play calls like, there I, in that I, series like yes that stand was amazing by nebraska but i i take that as more as okay rutgers offense is really bad than nebraska's defense is really good and th- this is a really good defense. I'm not saying that it wasn't a great stand. It was. But I still want to see them do it against an offense that's competent. <laughs> I mean, that's just the word I'm going to say is competent because they haven't done it against a competent offense yet. They haven't really had any competent offenses to do it against except for Illinois, which, as we know, laid an egg. It just was pretty poor. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I agree with everything you guys are saying. But I do think that... This is a testament to what they're going to do for the rest of the season. I think that I think that the they're they're trending towards. If we're putting them in Ben's tears here, they are trending towards <laughs> the great level. They're not. I don't think they're there yet. The pieces are there. It's just now. Now it's about putting everything together, and we're starting to see that, especially in the secondary. We all thought that when Tommy Hill went down. We, we had our questions about the secondary to begin with to start the season. Because I remember during Colorado week, we were saying that if Shadur gets enough time, he is going to absolutely blow up Nebraska's secondary, and that didn't happen. I mean, he didn't get time. <laughs> but case in point, with about the, the, um, 
the defense of the mm-hmm. yeah that thank you um words are hard but they are yep but but since Tommy Hill has gone down like they haven't gotten weaker they've gotten stronger they've looked a lot better then I mean and then I, I I'm gonna say it again they haven't gone against a great passing attack yet though either so and they were I mean our whole I feel like a whole viewpoint of how the defense played might have changed if um. I'm um, forgetting who dropped the pass. I think it was Ben Black for Ben Black. Yep. Yeah, Ben Black for Rutgers. If he if Rutgers, if he doesn't drop that, I mean, it hit him right in the face mask. That was a wide open touchdown. If, if he catches that, scores, it's they then it's then fourteen to seven with ten minutes left. That if you're in Nebraska, then you're starting to worry. Like our whole perception of how the defense played would have changed if he just brought in that. I mean, I just want to say that like they they still played great, but we'd be talking a whole different. It, it, it'd be way different conversation if he just brings in that catch, which you would think on if he had that chance 99 times, he would catch it all 99 times. This was the one time out of that 100 that he didn't catch that. Yeah, and, but sometimes you just got to give the receiver credit. Like look, In the instance that he does catch it, you got to give him the credit for he he made a good play. He shook the defender off of him. He might not be the best receiver ever to live no but, not even close <laughs> I mean, but, he dropped that pass. <laughs> but, okay. but but good but but receiver especially like the some of your best receivers that you have on your team which ben black is should be able to shake defenders in that way and he did the fact that he dropped the pass obviously is not good but you still have to expect that out of like your receiver one, receiver two people, they, sh- they should be able to do that, especially if they're going deep like that. But outside of that, I mean, I mean, there, there, there's not too much to complain about, um, albeit who they played. I know I'm being nitpicky again. But yes, you are. You're always nitpicky. There was a different time where Rutgers was backed up on their own uh, goal line, and it was like a third and 15, and um, Cal McManus just threw a dot to – um. Uh, it was down the left side, and I can't remember who the receiver was, but just he was just wide open, great throw. It's just like those are just an, that's another time where they just kind of got bailed out in that. It's like okay, you can't be letting them do those kind of things. The secondary. Do you do you know what pass? I, it was it was the best throw of the day. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember. It was, that. It was the best throw. I don't remember the receiver that caught it. I'll look for um, look at that for you. But that was that was the best throw of the day, and yes, that was a great play. But still, that's just that's two times where. I mean, Rutgers isn't an exposing passing offense, and they had two deep throws. Um, pretty it was together. a 43-yard completion to, funny enough, Ben Black, actually. So he brought uh, that one in. Against Deshaun Singleton. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I just I just don't, like, I still have question marks about this secondary. Can they stop a better passing attack? Because Illinois, I still don't think Illinois' passing attack is like this all-great passing offense, and they were torching Nebraska's secondary. So it just, I don't know. This is a really good defense. I, I'm being very nitpicky right now because for Nebraska to go and get eight or nine wins, they're going to have to be a great defense. So I want I want to see that. I'm still just being a little skeptical. Yeah, I mean, in the second instance you were talking about, like I feel like every team, like you're going to get a lucky shot or you're not even a lucky shot. You're going to get a good shot where the defense isn't on it. That happens, you see, in all games all the time like yes. that just happens and then the first instance you're talking about like he could have caught it but he didn't so I don't really feel like there's a need to dwell on that because it didn't I'm, not, I'm not dwelling on it I'm still saying that great defenses don't give up those plays in critical moments like on a third and 15 a great defense isn't going to give that up they, they, they shouldn't be giving that up I agree you but, have, I agree, like, but it's, it not, it's happen, not the fact so. that it just happened because yes big pass plays happen it's when it happened it's on a third and 15, that shouldn't happen. That should be, okay, get off the field. And you don't get off the field on third and 15. Like, those, like a great defense, that wouldn't happen to. But, and then the other touchdown pass, I mean, that, I'm more harping on the third and 15 one than the, the drop pass. The, than the drop, I mean, just because that was third and 15 and that just, it just, that just shouldn't happen. That's kind of, that, that, those are the kind of plays that when an offense makes that, that gives them momentum and that, that's how they score. But okay, you want to move to special teams? <laughs> no, uh, b- before we go to special teams, I okay. think we I think we got to give James Williams his due time. Oh yes, because he's he, the man has earned it. My goodness, earned. four sacks in the last two games. No, he's been he is earning playing time. A lot of defense. it. He needs it because he. I'm I'm already ready to say that he might be a better edge rusher than Nash, Jamari, Ty. 
Ooh. He he might like he just brings a different skill set on the edge that those guys just don't have. Those guys are better better beefier up front to stop against to stop the run, which is a big deal. I'm not saying they shouldn't be on the field. They're great players, but I'm saying Williams brings another X factor on the edge, which is kind of what Nebraska needs. They don't really have a great edge rusher, I don't feel like. Cause I, I remember last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, you mentioned, and and again, we're not trying to rip on like Hutmaker or, or Ty Robinson or any of those guys, but they they all have the skill sets of like nose tackles and interior defensive linemen. None of them are really edge rushers. I wouldn't say that the skill set of James Williams is above guys like Ty Robinson and Nash and, and people like that. I'm Be- saying on the edge. Oh, well, on is. the on the edge, absolutely. But if we're talking overall, no, sk- overall, definitely overall not. skill sets, he's not there yet. And, no, and I think that's also where guys like Riley Van Poppel are going to end up to once n- next year. Is he did get in this week for for a little while? But he he brings a different dynamic that wasn't really there last year. I'm so let's go back to that third and fifteen. You don't need guys that can stop the run. You know they're gonna pass. That's when I'd want James Williams out there. Get him rushing the passer on that third and fifteen. And maybe Cali Manis doesn't make that throw. But like that's where I want him deployed. I want him deployed when you, their backs are against the wall. You put him out there and you get a big time sack. Th- like those are the plays. That the defense has to make and that that's the kind of role i see him on i don't see him having a consistent three down role because i mean they're gonna rotate a lot of guys on the defensive line but i i just i want to see him on those like i really feel like he's already at the point where in some of those critical moments he can be able to get to the pass he can be able to get to the quarterback that maybe ty or nash couldn't get to the quarterback in an instance i don't i don't know i kind of beg to differ on that just a little bit not 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 entirely i think that by season's end James Williams is going to be a key rotational piece, and he's going to be seeing a lot. He of, already a lot is of, right now, but he's but he's not getting the snaps he should be getting. Like, That's what I'm saying. I want to I want to I w- see, have him. I want to see more. But I but I want to see him out there on like second down and third down, not not just. When the opponent is behind the sticks and you know that they're going to pass, I'm not I, saying that's the only time he should be out there, but I'm saying that's when I want him out there the most is on those on those. He just, he just needs to be out there more flat out. So we're in agreement. <laughs> so so you yes. so you're disagreeing with me, but agreeing with me. Okay, agreeing no, to disagree. You guys are agreeing. No, we're agreeing. <laughs> and he just made yeah. it, the tone of your voice made it seem like you weren't agreeing. No, all right, Jay, Th- this I, is just what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I I, I want to see him get a lot more point time. One, it would give. I mean, Ty, how many? Look how many snaps Ty played. He played a crazy amount of snaps. I don't know if you can even. I know, I had the number. Probably I not. I th- it was a high number of snaps. Something Anyways, crazy. Um. But just being able to maybe get him a little bit more rest, get Nash a little bit more rest. Um, Cam Lenhart's kind of gone. He's kind of fallen off yeah, the table I, a little I, bit. I don't know what's happened with that. I mean, James Williams kind of taking his spot, I guess, on, kind of as that edge guy. But I really liked what I've seen from James Williams. I want to see him out there more. I mean, you guys said everything. I, I mean, I don't know if there's much more to add to that. I mean, the the story that he's got, too, is oh, yeah, pretty incredible, story. too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, coming from yeah, – Coming from outside the program, train string him last year, didn't really play all that much, and now he's he's really making the most of the opportunities that he's gotten and has kind of come out of out of the void and into the spotlight in literally ten days. Like it's been wildly impressive what he's been able to do. Yeah. I mean I'm he he's tied um for the weed and sacks right now. And he's really only gotten decent playing time in the last two games i mean that, that that's why i want to see him more like i i don't feel like if, if you only give nash that amount of snaps he wouldn't be able to make that much of an impact with that little of snaps in my opinion that's just why i want to see him out there more he's just done so much with the little amount of time he's gotten now i'm gonna yell at ben and end up agreeing with him <laughs> here we go here, right. here we go jim here we go tony let's go to special teams okay um brian Bushini, mvp of the game Everyone's saying that. I'm saying it. I mean, I, I I'm sticking by it. I I guess. I mean, say he was the MVP already. Come on. I I always have a hard time giving the punter the MVP. Oh, so what? 
I mean, to be honest, I mean, okay, Ben's he, just, he made, Ben's just a special teams he, hater. He he made he made a good throw. On oh, the I'm fake, not even. I'm punt. not even talking about the he throw. Did, he did good on that, and then he had some really good punts. I'm not like he was a big player in that game, but I feel like I mean, who had a bigger impact on the game? Just like the defense hold, like when they got the pump blocked, the defense holding him on the goal line there. That's why they won the game, not because Bushini punted it 69 yards on the last play. Bendros is a Brian Bushini hater. I am not a Brian Bushini <laughs> hater. Yes, you are. I, I'm not. I'm the. How was the punter the most valuable player in that game? Oh, I, I think I, he I absolutely was the most I, valuable I, player I, in the I, game. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe I am a hater. He, he, <laughs> you are a hater. Def, he was definitely <laughs> like top three or five. I'm not going to say he was the definite like top reason. Like, So if I say most valuable player, is that he's the reason they won? That's not what I'm saying at all. I think he was probably the most impactful individual player in that game. Not only did they have the fake punt, the fake punt, which, by the way, Newsflash, they are absolutely going to do on Saturday because they said that after the game. Oh, yeah, we were absolutely going to do it at some point. It was just when were they going to deploy it? But I remember, and I'm going to bring in some because, you know, go Chicago Bears, but they – have probably the new punt god on their team in Tory Taylor, ex Iowa Hawkeyes punter. But when they were playing uh, the Rams a couple weeks ago, and the offense was really struggling, the boot that Tory Taylor was able to put on the ball and be able to pin the Rams back as far as he was able to was really impressive, and it completely threw the Rams out of out of sync and. They were scrounging for opportunities to try and be able to push the ball down the field when they were backed up at, like, the five. And it felt like every time that Bushini was kicking the ball, except for the two times that it got blocked, which I put that more on his coverage team and trying to to keep Rutgers at bay so he can actually punt the ball. But when he was able to get it off, I mean, he was averaging 50 yards a punt. He was flipping the field. And was giving Rutgers horrible field position every time he was kicking the ball. And setting up the defense. And and setting up the defense with a really long field to go. I mean, not to mention that he had to deal with the elements as well. When you have, when you're going against the wind like that and Rutgers is coming at you hard and they've already blocked a couple of your punts, you got to line drive that thing. I mean, I just got to imagine what was going through his head when he was trying to get those balls off when he was going against the wind like that. I mean, the influence that he had in trying to pin back an already not great Rutgers offense at the time, just to set them back even further, I felt like was very influential in the outcome of the game. Yeah. I mean, that's what a punter is supposed to do, though. I mean... I, but a defense is supposed to stop the offense. Like it's, no, oh, they're all I, I, doing. Like, no, 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 I'm not saying like that. A defense isn't supposed to stop them at the two yard line when a punt gets blocked. I'm, I'm that's that's what I'm saying. I think you could point to, in, you could point to any player on the defense. See, the only reason you're not wanting to say defensive player is because not one guy stands out. But all those guys played great. And just because one defensive player doesn't stand out, that, that doesn't mean oh the punter was the most valuable player in that game. Like, like that's just, that's where I'm at right now. So who I, would your single most valuable player in the game be? Ty, he played the most. Like, he played the crazy amount of snaps. Had big impact on the. I, I mean, I'm just saying, Ty. I think Ty had a bigger impact on the game than Brian Bushini. I mean, the gust when gusts were up to 40 miles an hour. The uh, the fact that he was still able to kick the ball that far. I'm, I mean. Two of them, Rutgers, the guy, I mean, all he had to do was just fair catch it, and it wouldn't have bounced another 15 yards. I mean, that's also another thing. I was kind of confused why. Fair catch it. I'm, I'm kind of confused why Rutgers wasn't catching some of those. Yeah, their their coverage on special teams was not fantastic. I mean, you're, I mean, your 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 punt, I mean, your punt averages are always going to be looking really good when <laughs> they're not fair catching them and they're just letting them bounce another 15 yards. I'm not I'm not trying to hate on Brian Bushini. He, he played great. I'm just saying. I, I just want to slow some of this rhetoric down because early in the season, people did not like how Brian Bushini was playing. And now all of a sudden... Oh, I was most, not one of those people. Now, now he's the most valuable player in that game. I, I, I don't know. still think he was. But okay. that, we can agree to disagree. I'm fine with that. Yeah, we couldn't do that earlier. I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, no, he played... No, but Bushini was good. I mean, we, you take... I'm glad we're not taking for credit when a punter plays good. I, I don't want to say that, but... 
I'm just I just want to slow the road. There, a bit. there, there, there is some credit to be had there, though. But there, speak- there is, there is. Bushini played good. I'm yes, not saying absolutely. he didn't play good. I just, I just don't ever want to say that a punter was the most valuable player in the game. Okay. I'm, just, right. I'm just in that right. camp. I'm, I'm never gonna say that. Okay, that that's fine. The one, the one camp I, I will be in though, is that I finally got a bold take right. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> I, I said that. Glad you can add it to your resume. I, I said that Nebraska would not miss a field goal, an extra point, and I was right because they didn't attempt a field goal and they got both of their extra points. So I am living large right now. Um, but overall, I thought that for, for save a couple things that went wrong, but I thought that operational-wise, they – Fix some things that went wrong in that Purdue game, but there's still a long way to go for them. Danny, they didn't attempt a field goal. What, 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 <laughs> what, what did they fix? They had two punts blocked, and they didn't attempt a field goal, so we don't even know how the field goal. We, we have we have extra points. We we know they can make extra points. They've done that all season. Uh, uh, no, they've not, they, not, not they in have, Purdue. They have not. They didn't not miss a, a single po- extra point against Purdue. At least they're kicking the ball. No, I'm saying extra points was never the issue. At That's, least they're at least they're kicking the ball. What, what? You want them to go for two? <laughs> they sh- probably should have a couple times. No, they've been. They have not missed an extra point this year. That hasn't been the problem. It's been can you make a thirty-five yarder? That's the issue. That with that we still don't know that. We still don't know if That's they can make I'm a saying, thirty-five yarder. They, they still got a lot of work to do. They didn't fix anything, though. That's what oh I'm saying. Nothing... At least we didn't have to come to a field goal. At least it ended in it's, touchdowns. It's not, but... it's not the... <laughs> what got fi- That's what I want to ask it's, you. What it's got not, fixed? It's not the topic of discussion this week. It's because not the they least... didn't attempt a field goal. <laughs> they had two punts blocked. All I care what is that my got bull... fixed? If anything, it got worse. Oh, ben Hurts. He's... No, if any... no, this is the thing. If anything got worse... They've had two field goals blocked against Purdue. Then they had two punts blocked against Rutgers. That's four punts or field goals you've had blocked in the last two games, and you somehow won both of them because the other team hasn't been that great. That you, if, When you play teams like Indiana, if Nebraska has two field goals or two punts blocked against Indiana, they're not going to win. That is why I'm harping on this right now. Nothing got fixed, Danny. Can, I, I Don't say that. Nothing got fixed. Nothing got fixed, Danny. They didn't fix anything right now. It might be a little bit better. We don't know. They didn't attempt a field goal. But you can't say. I'm not, I'm not oh, saying. Just okay. Be, you literally said it got fixed. Some I said that it was fixed. improving. We don't know if it's improving. They didn't attempt a field goal. We don't know. I'm just going to let Ben go if, on his if, rant. If anything, uh, Danny, I'm saying that anything it got worse. They had two punts blocked. Danny, but, did you know that nothing got fixed? Oh, clearly I, I didn't know that. Danny, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're saying that it, it was improving. We don't know that. It could be improved. It's not the story of the week. Because it they was didn't the, kick. Because there, there, was, there wasn't any issues that, that forced their hand with special teams falling apart because it, it didn't. There was two punts that got blocked, Danny. People forget that. If they but score, that's... if they score when they had the pump blocked, if they score on that, I'm, I'm talking. That, we're I'm, talking about that. We're talking about that. I'm right talking now. specifically about guys like the long snapper and the holders and the kickers. I'm not necess- in this, in this instance. I'm not exactly talking about the second stringers and the third stringers that are in protection coverage. I'm not talking about that. The snapping okay. was not an issue this week. It, it sure didn't look like it. There was okay. no issues with holding a ball. John Hole was not missing extra points. He and hasn't yet, missed extra points all year, though. I I don't care about that. He missed th- he got t- he missed one and b- got two kicks blocked last week. That has a huge hit on overall morale when you're talking about a kicker going out there and he's had three failures the week before. And we saw him out there before the game last week struggling, or not last week. But on Saturday, struggling to hit those balls. You, what do you think he's thinking on the sideline? Like, I sucked in pregame. Now I got to go out there in a game that is absolutely going to be low scoring, and I got to be able to knock those in. I'm talking specifically about the guys that could have lost that game for Nebraska at Purdue, and thank God for the offense to be able to bail them out in that way. Because I'm talking especially about guys like Camden Watucky. Brian Muschini when he hold, when he's holding the ball, 
when you're kicking the ball for extra points. That's so he never, what I, he never had to hold. I mean, only on extra points. He but had to do but that. that but that's where things went awry against Purdue. I don't care if it was for extra points or a 50 yard field goal. The fact that they were able to operationally carry that out, yeah, it only might have been two times, but they were able to carry it out and they were able to convert on both of those is encouraging in my eyes because of how awful it went the week before. And it was those guys Mm -hmm. that were screwing it up and not the protection. Yeah, the protection was downright awful on those punts, which is why the two punts got blocked. I'm not saying that's not the issue at all. I'm talking about the four. He was talking about snapping. I'm talking about snapping and holding. That's what okay. I. That's what I'm getting at. We saw we saw two snaps and holds on field goals, which I mean they're both extra points. I want to say this though because extra an extra point is like okay we do this every day, extra point like you you do that a million times throughout the season. Field goals is a lot different. It's a lot a fi- like a kicker of a, a, a extra point is like a is like a layup, a 35 40 yard or yard field goal for hole and this crew is not a layup. Those are two completely different things, in my opinion. Extra point is very, like, routine. Having to go out there, oh, the offense stalled out. Okay, let's go kick a field goal. It's a lot different than, oh, we scored a touchdown. We get to go make the extra point. Like, those are two those are two different mindsets, two different things. I know that. those. I get those are two different mindsets, but you're also talking about what's going through their head when they're going back out there with how poorly it went a week ago. And some of those field goals that – did not work out for them were layups. Like they were close for enough, most teams, not this team. But they should be layups. And yes, yes, <laughs> I, we agree. <laughs> this, this, this is what I'm saying. Like but, I, I, okay. I, don't, I don't, Danny. I don't. I want to stiff arm the narrative that oh, we Nebraska won. Let's just forget that special teams wasn't great. Like that. That's what happens. That's what happens among fans, is that fans completely forgot that they had two punts blocked in that game. I don't I think fans have forgot. I think it's just it, we they won. Nebraska won. I think it can be overlooked. I don't think it's forgotten. I think it's pretty forgotten. I, I got to be honest. Because in most games, if you have a punt blocked, that is going to lose you the game. And they had two punts blocked. Like, that is systematically, that is bad. Like, you can't have that. You can't have it where... Oh, this week, oh, we got the extra points right. Oh, but we had two punts blocked. Like, is that is that where we're at with the special teams right now? Is that how bad it's been? I'm, I'm focusing, focusing specifically on one aspect of it. I'm not saying that every, everything is cupcakes I, and I, rainbows. I know that's not what you're saying, but we still have like, – we don't know if it's gotten improved, though. Just because they snapped well twice on an extra point doesn't mean that it's improving. We don't know that. I want to see this team make a field goal, and then I'll maybe start backing up on this. All right. I, I, I just this this special teams is still going to be the reason why I think this team might still only win seven games this year. The special teams is probably going to be the like if I was going to say okay Ben, why do you think this team's only going to win seven games? I'm not I'm not saying I'm, if I was going to say okay I think they're only going to win seven games. My number one reason is be be well because they can't make a field goal. They had punts blocked. A lot. I, I don't want to say all the time. They've had three punts blocked already this game. That's so they played six games. They've had three punts blocked. So every other game you have a punt blocked, and then you've had three field. You've had two field goals blocked. So you've had five punts or field goals blocked in six games. That is bad, Danny. That is bad. At that, that, you go. I'm done. <laughs> I'm I don't done. know. To me, it's bad. I get that it's bad, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I think. When you can still find a way to win, and you still like you, you're still winning. Yes, but now, the, but the the question right now that fans are asking is, can Nebraska beat Indiana? And that that's what we're looking at right now. And if they have a field goal or a punt block, they're probably not going to win. That that that's the issue. That's the issue. It's working right now against teams that you're better than. When you start playing teams that are just as good as you or just a little bit better, these are kind of mistakes you can't afford to have. And I don't want to hear anyone be like, oh, well, the special teams looked great because they really didn't. It wasn't that great. They executed the fake punt really well. That was good. Bushini had some good – like literally the only person on special teams that played great was Bushini. No, Nobody – like – who else played good on the special teams? Because they because they had two good snaps on extra points. We're gonna say the snapper played great. Like, 
Who else played good on the special teams, Danny? It was literally just Puccini. I'll, I'll take that. And that, I think that's what we've been saying. That's, no, that's, you're, you're <laughs> talking about, you're seeing improvement. I don't know what improvement you're seeing. Even if it's the smallest thing, I will take it after the disaster. But we Improvement we, is m- improvement. All right, whatever. I don't think there's any improvement. I got to be honest, but okay, let's move on. I'm, <laughs> you, I'm, 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 I'm getting uh, amped up on this, so let's yes, just move yes on. Yes, you are. So let's do a little, because um, it, because we, we, <laughs> we, we got a little ways to go until Nebraska's next game when they play yeah, Indiana. This is this is a bye week for them. Their first of two bye weeks. Um, they need it. Th- they for those do. Special teams. Yes. <laughs> they do. Um, I want to see them make a field goal against Indiana. So, in the calmest of terms i think we should start to very lightly preview what we're going to see in a couple of weeks first of all this is going to be a big noon game if you said before the season to me that this was going to be a big noon game i probably would have laughed really hard in your face that's what you tweeted i, I did tweet that <laughs> that's so you, you did say that yeah so you I, did say that i that i said <laughs> um i'm i gotta say i am Kind of surprised to see Indiana playing as well as they have, considering their track record. I mean, you got to give Kurt Signetti the the credit where it's due. He has done a a really nice job turning things around. But like Ben had said earlier, Indiana really hasn't played anybody yet. I mean, they haven't. I I still think they're a really good team, though. I mean, I got to be honest. I still think this is a team that's higher caliber than Nebraska right now. But maybe I'll be proved wrong. I want to see proof. I want to. I want to be proved wrong, Danny. <laughs> I want to be proved wrong. Yeah, I mean, like we said earlier, scoring seventy-seven on anyone is pretty crazy. I, so <laughs> Nebraska's not doing that. Yeah, I don't necessarily think Nebraska is the same caliber, but I would like to be go out and go. I'd like for them to go out and surprise me, especially with this bye week where they can work on a lot of things that we have been talking about throughout this podcast episode, um, such as special teams, such as defending against a team that is really good on offense and scoring 77 points um so i really i really do hope that they go out and win against a ranked team i think that would be a step in the right direction and then we can really see how the rest of their season is going to go but i am hopeful i just hope to be proven wrong in the little pessimistic side of me Uh, um sorry i one more time on special teams and people keep saying oh well maybe they'll be better out of the bye week i just don't think these issues are just things that get fixed in a week they can be improved though i'm not saying that they're going to go away i'm not saying they're going to go away I, i'm not wanting to just point you out because that's like everyone's saying that oh well it's, hopefully this next week the the kicking game is improved they're not gonna i mean it's just those are just not things that like they're doing so much during the week preparing for the team that I, they they can't just like devote hours to be like okay like like this this is I don't know how am I, how am I wanting to say this like special this is not that's just not something that can be fixed easily special teams is such like a fundamental thing that if it's broken that takes a really long time to be able to like build it up so I just I don't know I I, I it's still going to be an issue against Indiana it's going to be an issue against Ohio State and it's probably still going to be an issue when when they play Iowa for the last game of the year. Special teams is going to be an issue all year, and just be prepared. Yeah, I'm not saying it's going to go away, but I do think that maybe they will start to improve and see that improvement that Danny's been talking about. <laughs> what, what improvement? <laughs> what? What improvement, Danny? Maybe okay, we'll whatever. see against Indiana. Whatever. Yeah, then they, when, when, yeah, when they have no punts or field goals blocked, they'd be like, see? Improvement. <laughs> I mean, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. All right. What's what, next on the dock, Danny? What what I want to see is how, particularly the offense. I want to see how they handle the bye week, mm-hmm. and what goes into practice this week because they're still operating on a regular schedule. They're still practicing Tuesday through Thursday mm-hmm. this week, and and I want to see what Dylan Rail learns from his first bat game because this was this was arguably. No, I'm not even going to say arguably. This was his worst game that he's played in his collegiate career. And he's only played six games, and that's fine. He's a freshman. we got to expect things like this. But this is we, – we said this before Illinois that it was going to be the biggest game. But now this this is the biggest game that he's going to play in. You got to – in a nutshell, you have to wipe Ohio State off the schedule for, for this game coming up. Because 
yeah, they're still going to go out there and try and win the game. But in the back of their heads, they're probably going to know, like, okay, they're miles ahead of us. There's probably not much we can do in they're this game. They're not thinking that. I feel like they they have the one and zero mentality. Yeah, they're, they're not that like they're not if 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 they are thinking that the game's lost. If that is at all in the minds of any of the players, the, just just put the L on that right now. I mean, you just saw Vanderbilt beat Alabama. I mean, it it can happen, and Rule knows that. So that's why I like. I, I don't like I, any of that rhetoric. I mean, I say they're gonna lose. I don't think they're gonna win, but I'm not gonna say that it's impossible that they can't win. I am not banking on them winning. I'm so, not either. I'm not either. Anyway, sorry, Danny. What I want to see is how Rayola bounces off of this bye week and what he learns from his first bad game. Because, yeah, he can be all high and mighty. They can have this one and all mentality. And he's probably not thinking this, but I am, because he is not going to have a good game against Ohio State. I do, I do not care what anyone says. I am not banking on a good game at Ohio State. And I don't, and I don't think Rayola is going to play very well either. Now, I really hope that he proves me wrong, but I just do not see it with the way that this team is constructed. Now, with that being said, them going into Ohio State six and one, I think is something that could happen and I want to see how Rayola does going up against this Indiana team that while yes they haven't really played anybody they have been very very good this season no matter how you chalk it up especially with the scoring output that they have and like I said before Colorado if Nebraska tries to turn this game into a shootout they will surely lose and I think this is where the defense especially comes into things is they've got to play locked down like they've been playing the last two weeks. But I especially want to see what this offense does. How is Rayola going to be able to battle the adversity? Because everything is going to be stacked up against him in two weeks. What's the rushing game going to look like? Are they going to play the hot hand, or are they going to stick to a design game plan? Is Marcus Satterfield going to be willing to switch things up if the game doesn't go in his way? Because we have seen that he can be a stickler in that fashion. He wants to stick to his plan and then not try anything else. Is he going to be willing to be flexible? How are the receivers going? We didn't even talk about the receivers today. No one had more than 40 yards, and a lot of that's a byproduct of how Rayola played. How is the distribution going to look? Just all things to consider. Mm -hmm. I'm especially wanting to see just how the offense looks. Is this going to be a better week for them? And I really hope it is. It's going to have to be. I mean, if Nebraska only scores 14 against Indiana, they're not going to win. Um and and we keep saying Rayola didn't play great. Um, he there, there's a difference between like Rayola's bad game is different than Caden McNamara's bad game for Iowa. Like can we can we like I just want to <coughs> get this rhetoric out that he just like looked incompetent out there. He I don't think anyone no said no one's that. saying that. I mean it, it but I just feel like there's he he didn't play. It wasn't like. Like it was good enough to win, and that's all. It was, it was good enough to. It was that's all Rayola has to do, and I feel like, and a lot of it, it was just the game plan in that second half, though. Like they weren't letting him. I feel like they were holding him back in that second half. They weren't letting him be himself, and that, I feel like that's kind of a whole issue of this offense. Is I feel like you're just holding him back a little bit because I feel like they were like, okay, just run the ball. They were just like they were just they were trying not to lose instead of trying to win. And it worked. They didn't lose, but I don't like him when team. You know what I mean? Like, there's a difference between playing to win and playing not to lose. Nebraska was playing not to lose on offense, and that's when you get in. The, that's when you get in the trouble. Let Rayola play his game, and I feel like the interception might have had something to do with that. It definitely did. It definitely did. And that's just it's just a mistake. Like quarterbacks make that. I just don't want like I just hoping it's Indiana. If Rayola throws an interception, I don't want them to just turn all conservative on offense because that's not going to work. But I, they, they, they're going to have to play better. I don't think Indiana's defense is – I mean, is, do you think Indiana's defense is better than Rutgers? I, I mean I, – I, I don't know if I want to say that. They, I don't probably not. I don't know enough about Indiana's defense right now to definitively say that they're better or not. So I'm going to pass on that um, until I know a little bit more. Pass. So I'm going to pass. What is Indiana's defense? Pass. <laughs> Yeah, I think I really want to see Raiola get something going and the offense get see some see the offense get something going. But yeah, no, I don't Raiola had a 
bad game for how he's been playing. But mm-hmm. I don't think anyone's saying that he's, you know, having like his his bad game isn't going to be as bad as like Cade McConnell from UTEP's bad game. Like everybody has different levels. Like mm-hmm. his worst game isn't going to be somebody else's worst game. So I don't think anybody's out here th- saying that he is incompetent. He needs to be replaced. Like he just <laughs> had a bad game. Yeah. And happens. that's happens. That's part of the game. It's part of the sport. So I I just I've more feel like the performance is just because of how the game was. Um, that's just how it is. I mean, when you get when you're playing, I don't know. When you're playing Illinois and your offense is just going back and forth scoring, I mean, that's a different kind of a game than when you're playing Rutgers and you know it's going to be a dogfight and there's probably only going to be two or three touchdowns scored in the game. You just you just play it different. Now, the the thing that concerned me when he was kind of missing some of those open throws, that was a little bit concerning. But I feel like one thing we haven't brought up is I feel like the elements, like there, it was pretty windy down there, and I don't know how much that affected. Forty Rayola. miles an hour. For the yeah, so that's just Pretty something. He, that's just something he hadn't played in yet. So that's still something like he's a freshman, hasn't played in Windy Memorial Stadium yet. So that's just something he's got to get used to. But they, they, I mean, they're definitely going to play better against Indiana if they don't. They're not going to win. So nope. I mean, that's just bottom line. We'll definitely get into the, that more with some more shows coming up. We will not give up on our football talk. Uh, Position grades, Danny. Position grades will be done another day. We <laughs> what? How dare you, Dan? We basically got through all position grades that we needed to get through. It can be inferred. It, it, it can inferred. be inferred. You can read Ben's full position grade column at DillonNebraska.com along yes. with all of our other football coverage. This was a fantastic show. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching on YouTube. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Danny. I always love being here for football talk. It's so much fun on the football <laughs> Monday. You like me yelling at Danny? It's entertaining. It's so much fun <laughs> on the football Monday. We will have another show coming up in a couple days. We'll talk a little bit more football. We've got some volleyball stuff to get to with a couple big games Maybe coming up we'll... this weekend for the Black Shorts. But until then, we will see you next time. Thank you, everybody, for watching or listening. Take care, everybody.